Chapter Ten of Poison Romance and Poison Mysteries by Charles John Samuel Thompson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Ten about aconite and hemlock aconite or monk's hood whose purple flower shaped like a helmet or monk's hood is a familiar feature in our country gardens ranks as one of the most ancient of vegetable poisons the name aconite was derived from acon a city of heraclea and the plant owing to its deadly nature was supposed by the early greeks to have originated from the foam of the dog cerberus aconite was largely used as an arrow poison by the ancients and also employed for that purpose by the chinese and the wild hill tribes of india it was used by the ancient greeks and romans to destroy life and they believed they could cause death to take place at a certain time by regulating the dose of poison thus theophrastus writes the ordering of this poison was different according as it was designed to kill in two or three months or a year the poison cup of the ancients was probably a compound of which hemlock and aconite were the chief ingredients this was used for carrying out the criminal death penalty and also for purposes of suicide when so desired a curious relic of this ancient custom was practiced at marseilles where a poison was kept by the public authorities of which hemlock was an ingredient a dose of this was allowed by the magistrates to any one who could show a sufficient reason why he should deserve death valerius maximus observed this custom came from greece particularly from the island of chaos where i saw an example of it in a woman of great quality who having lived very happy ninety years obtained leave to die this way lest by living longer she should happen to see a change of her good fortune theophrastus states thrasius a great physician invented a composition which would cause death without any pain and it was prepared with the juice of hemlock and poppy together and did the business in a small dose when vice and dissipation were at their height in rome suicide was most common and it was often met with among the greeks after they had been contaminated by roman manners and customs when the greeks and romans recognized the impossibility of suppressing suicide they decided to establish tribunals whose duty it should be to hear the applications of those persons who wished to die if the applicant succeeded in showing what the tribunal considered good cause for quitting life his prayer was granted and he destroyed himself under the authority of the court in some instances the court not only sanctioned the suicide but supplied the means of self-destruction in the shape of a decoction of aconite and hemlock if any one applied for permission to end his life and was refused and in defiance of the decision committed suicide his act was illegal the romans in such cases confiscated the property of the deceased the greeks held his memory as dishonored and treated his body with indignity the aconite now used in medicine is derived from the aconitum napolis chiefly grown in britain it is also found in the mountainous districts of the temperate parts of the northern hemisphere it grows on the alps the pyrenees the mountains of germany and austria and also in denmark and sweden on the himalayas it is found at ten thousand to sixteen thousand feet above the sea level both the root and the leaves are used medicinally the tap root of the aconite has been frequently eaten in mistake for horseradish with fatal results aconite contains several active principles all of which are powerful poisons the chief of these is aconitine probably the most deadly poison known the fiftieth part of a grain of which has nearly caused death indian aconite known as bish is chiefly derived from aconitum ferox a native of high altitude in the himalaya regions and is mentioned by the persian physician aleroy in the tenth century also by many early arabian writers on medicine isa ben ali pronounced it to be the most rapid of deadly poisons and describes the symptoms with tolerable correctness the chief symptoms of poisoning by aconite are heat numbness and tingling in the mouth and throat giddiness and loss of muscular power 
the pupils become dilated the skin cold and pulse feeble with oppressed breathing and dread of approaching death finally numbness and paralysis come on rapidly followed by death in a few sudden gasps the poison being extremely rapid in effect immediate action is absolutely necessary in order to save life several species of aconite grow plentifully in india where it has been used for centuries it is found growing at an elevation of ten thousand feet above the level of the sea and among other places in the singalilas a mountain range which forms the watershed boundary between nepal and british territory northwest of darjeeling aconitrum palmatum is collected in abundance at tonglu the southern termination of the singalilas but a napalis which is more poisonous requires a higher elevation in which to thrive the natives especially the hill tribes take aconite in the crude state as a remedy for various ailments and every botaya has a few dried roots put away in some secure corner of his hut the method of collecting is thus described early in october when the aconite root has matured one of the leading men of the village organizes a party composed of both sexes he for the time becomes their leader settles all disputes and quarrels while out in camp and while keeping an account of the general expenses supplies to each all necessaries in the way of food before starting he has to obtain a permit from the forest department the charge for which is fifteen rupees carefully wrapping the pass up in a rag and placing it in his network bag of valuables he collects his band together and they set out for the higher ranges as soon as they arrive at the slopes where aconite is growing plentifully they at once set to work to build bamboo huts about five feet high roofing them with leaves after the morning meal they all set off for the lower slopes each with basket and spade over his shoulder but before the actual work is commenced a ceremony has to be performed the botayas like the nepalese have a belief that the presiding demon of the hills imprisons evil spirits in the aconite plant which fly out as soon as it is dug up and inflict dire calamity on the digger in order therefore to counteract this every morning before the digging commences the lama or head man standing on a convenient hill with his followers around him makes a fire and burns some tuna a native rosin then inserting two fingers in his mouth blows several shrill whistles all wait in breathless silence till an answering whistle is heard which may be an echo or the cry of some bird whatever it may be it is taken as the dying dirge of the evil spirits and digging begins at once the roots after being shaken from the soil are placed in the baskets which on return to the encampment are emptied and formed into heaps and covered with bamboo leaves to protect them from the frost during the day they are spread out in the sun to dry when a sufficient quantity has been collected and dried thus bamboo frames are fixed up with a fire below on which the aconite is placed when the flame has died out the one who looks after this drying process has a cloth tied round his head covering the nose as the constant inhalation of the fumes causes a feeling of heaviness and dizziness in the head this process is carried on three or four days until the roots are dried when sufficient have been collected and dried they are packed in baskets these are shouldered and with their cooking utensils and blankets on the top the whole band set their faces homeward on arrival at the commercial centre at the termination of their march the results of the expedition are soon sold and each man is handed his share of the profits according to the amount of aconite he has collected End of chapter ten